Welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, it's a bit of an introduction to our digital marketing open program at Imperial College. My name is uh, Omar Merlo and I am an assistant professor in marketing at Imperial College Business School. And uh, I guess I'll say a couple of things about me. Uh, my main research areas are into strategic issues that, uh, to do with marketing. So I work very much at the intersection between marketing and strategy, asking questions such as what role should marketing play within companies? What kind of influence should marketers have? Uh, what kind of uh, systems should we put in place for organizing marketing around the organizations? And uh, in particular, I also look within the context of services and relationship marketing. So so I look at what works in services organizations, what works in relationship marketing, both in B2B and B2C. And other areas in which I'm interested, of course, is digital marketing, which is the focus of this uh, program, and marketing related decision making. I've worked with a number of organizations around the world, whether in the UK or elsewhere, in a number of industries, in, 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 whether services, whether in manufacturing, whether in B2C or B2B. <coughs> and and um, over the years, I've uh, tried to incorporate much of my understanding of uh, what I see with my clients' work into my own research. So uh, I think one of the advantages, I guess, of uh, uh, working very much with organizations in, in the real world and not just uh, researching or doing desk research is it allows me to, A, uh, uh, disseminate the, uh, the findings of my own research, and B, it allows me to incorporate my understanding of the problems that organizations have into my own research so that I, I am able to uh, do work that is more relevant, not just theoretically and scientifically, but also relevant to practitioners. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because this in many ways uh, informs and determines very much how we approach uh, these programs at Imperial College Business School. Uh, now, you're interested in the, uh, in, in the Digital Marketing Open program, and, and, and this is uh, one of uh, our most important programs in marketing because, obviously, everything is changing, everything is being reinvented, and, and the digital world now really represents a great opportunity for the businesses who are able to take advantage of uh, digital channels and all these new uh, tools that are available to us. But it also represents a, a terrible threat to those who don't. So you either keep up and you either upskill yourself, you either become familiar with what you can do with digital, or if you don't, you run the risk to be at a competitive disadvantage. So what we're interested in this program is to talk about what can we do with digital from a marketing point of view that allows you to achieve a competitive advantage. Uh, the digital world, uh, what I've said, is changing dramatically. So what we normally do in the beginning of this program, we start by looking a little bit at some of the key changes in uh, digital marketing. So what are the key trends? So we talk a little about, about this process of digitization, the fact that everything is becoming digital. You might be familiar with Moore's Law, the idea that every 18 months process of power doubles. What that means is that the internet world is becoming a more attractive and cheaper place every day. The growth of the internet, of course, is, is affecting, it's changing business models, it's changing the way in which you connect with customers, it's changing the way in which we design a distribution strategies, it's changing the ways in which everything is being connected. So obviously, as a tool, is shaping very much trends within our digital landscape. We talk a little bit about network effects, of course, uh, and network effects and this idea that uh, the internet is becoming an increasingly more valuable place as it grows. And it's a place where that we see this separation of the economics of information from those of things. In other words, while in the past, shoppers were able, for example, to acquire knowledge about a product and buy their product from the same source. In other words, you go into a shop, you ask somebody for help, they will sell you a product and you buy it and you've got the information and the product from the same place. Now this isn't happening anymore in the digital world. Customers are acquiring information from a wide range of sources, they're doing their research, whether it's social media, whether it's company-owned websites, they're doing their, their information gathering uh, in different places. All of this process is becoming very fragmented and then they will go online and buy the product from the cheapest source. So we have really this, 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 uh, this, this information and, and, and purchase process that is completely fragmented and separated. But of course, the, the, what the internet is also allowed for is this customization. For the first time, we're really able to offer customers 
one-to-one -one marketing, almost mass customization, something that in the past was not possible. In the old days, there was always a trade-off between, in a sense, reach and richness. So how many customers could you reach, but with a, a standardized product? And, uh, as opposed to you know, reaching a, a lot of a uh, uh, few customers with a niche product. So there's always been this trade-off between um, mass and between customization. And we always have to make choices and strike the right balance. Now, for the first time, we're able to offer a lot of customers products that are tailored to their specific needs. And, and again, this is a, an opportunity that if we don't master it, if we don't take advantage of it, we can be at a competitive disadvantage. Now, what we we'll also see is a democratization of production and distribution. And we talk a little bit about this trend of how content now is generated by a variety of sources. Anybody now can be a content producer. All you need is a, it's a computer, it's a webcam, it's an internet connection, and you can compete with a company in content creation. So obviously now it's becoming more, the content is becoming more democratic. But of course it's not enough to have a lot of content because there's a lot of rubbish on the internet. The question is, how do we find customers who are interested in our stuff? How do we match demand and supply? And again, all these aggregators, search engines and all these things on the internet that allow us to do that, we need to know how to take advantage of these, uh, of these tools. So these are some of the trends that are going on, some of the, if you want, the foundations. And uh, what we know is that all these things are shaping critical strategic elements of marketing. So they're changing business models, they're changing service design, they're changing the, the experience, they're shaping the brand. Uh, but it can also just shape tactical elements, for example, how we communicate, how we advertise, how we link up, we reach out to customers, how we collect feedback, uh, and things like that. So the, 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 the digital world is becoming, uh, is changing. It's changing in terms of both the tactics and the strategies. And you know, while the ultimate objectives of a business, like creating customer value, uh, creating shareholder value, and things like that, they fundamentally haven't changed, they're still the same. The way in which we can achieve those objectives is really undergoing a revolution. And that's where uh, we come in with this program and we talk about what does it mean for you? What, what are some of the things that uh, you, you can master, you should be aware of in order to take advantage of these opportunities? Well, as you can see, if you are interested in digital, you, you, you probably know that you're not the only one. There's a, uh, there's a whole world of advertising, for example, now that has woken up to the fact that if customers are uh, on digital platforms, uh, maybe we should we should follow them there. And as you can see, for example, digital now accounts for 48% of ad spending in the UK alone. So over the last four or five years, digital has overtaken all other media in terms of uh, advertising. It overtook television about five years ago, and it's still growing very rapidly. So more and more advertisers are putting money into digital. Uh, well, we said it, the reason obviously is because digital is becoming very powerful in terms of targeting the customers, that's what your customers are. Uh, it's got a lot of benefits in terms of measurability, trackability and things like that. But it also in a sense betrays another reason why a lot of people or companies are putting a lot of money into digital is because they're not quite sure what works yet, so they spend a lot of money on it, so that a lot of money actually goes wasted. And, um, and, and there are, I guess, different targets, different directions in which um, this money is going. And primarily when we're talking about digital advertising, we're talking about things like display advertising, so banners, pop-ups, those kind of, uh, if you want, internet billboards. And you might be surprised to hear that display advertising is still probably the major component of advertising spending in countries like the UK. So it's very effective. So we talk a little bit about display advertising and why it works, why they still engage customers, why such a basic tool of marketing communications is still so uh, predominant. Uh, we talk a little bit about video marketing as well, of course. Now companies have a number of channels through which they can disseminate videos without the cost of putting it in through traditional advertising channels that which are deemed to be more expensive like televisions etc so video now video marketing through youtubes or comp company operated channels etc is becoming quite popular games advertising is also growing quite rapidly um, we, we have now companies actually creating branded games so ways to engage customers in, in an entertaining way and in a way that it's kind of sticky to the brand so while your traditional ad might uh, engage customers for say 20, 30 seconds, a game can actually engage customers for a very extended period.
your time and really get your brand uh, in the mind of the customers much more powerfully, much uh, uh, more effectively than traditional advertising. Mobile marketing, of course, is growing extremely rapidly. Uh, the number of people now worldwide who access the internet on mobile devices has overtaken the number of people who access the internet on desktop devices. So the world now is one where people are accessing content on very small screens while moving, while assimilating uh, multiple uh, media at the same time, watching TV, surfing the internet on the iPad, sending a message on the phone. So we have all this fragmentation. And all of this is really calling for strategies, for communication strategies, but also for, to some extent, business models and more strategic elements to be mobile specific. So we talk about also what that means to, to take your, uh, your strategy online on a, in a mobile context. And of course, let's not forget social media. Social media is the single biggest uh, um, source of time, if you want, a uh, place where customers are spending more, more of the time online. So social media is, is more takes up more time than, say, emailing, surfing the web, and things like that in, um, in your average um, uh, market. So what that means is that we need to, again, uh, uh, target uh, customers with social media in effective and efficient ways because, again, that's what customers are. But, of course, social media opens up a number of very interesting opportunities in terms of what should you say through social media channels, how should you say it, uh, and, um, and, 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 and through what channels in what ways. So social media, again, is one of those, uh, uh, it's like a jungle full of mystery. It's one that we're starting to really understand and explore. And uh, in this program, we also look at some case studies and examples of how we can actually tap into this, uh, this growing channel. What we found in our research uh, at Imperial College Business School when we talk to managers, when we talk to people who understand that marketing is changing because of digital, understand that there is this amazing opportunity and, 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 and we need to master it, they, they're, they're throwing more money into it. We, we find that uh, more and more uh, uh, marketing budgets are, are being diverted into into um, into into a digital uh, and often this happens without necessarily increasing the size of the budget so in other words we're taking away money from other channels and, sh and shifting them towards digital that's how important it has become but one of the things that uh, has emerged from our research and our work with managers uh, in, in a variety of contexts is that there's a lot of still confusion and even, even anxiety about digital so there's a feeling that Unless I'm taking advantage of this, and it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's difficult to figure out exactly what that means. Uh, unless I do that, um, I'm lagging behind. So there's this anxiety and this confusion about around what is digital, how does it work, what how can I use it, what are the tools available to me as a marketer. Now, the other thing that we found in our work is that it's not just uh, managers. So it's not just from the point of view of the organisation that we have. Um, certain responses to digital that are perhaps unexpected, but it's also from customers themselves. Now, one of the things that we learn often in, in, in business school, and we're probably a little bit complicit in, in, in teaching this, uh, this language to our, to, our, to our students, but it's something that we, that we do all the time in business and it comes natural, is that we make a number of assumptions about our customers. For example, we always assume that they're interested, that they, they want to learn about us. The language that we use in, 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 as marketers is often that of loyalty, engagement, relationship, uh, even love. Uh, the idea that oh, we need to build love for, for our brand. But the reality is that people don't love brands, and those who do, uh, few and, and far in between. Uh, brands that really elicit those kind of emotional responses to cus in customers are extremely rare. And that's why they're often used in case studies, like your Apple case studies, your Google case studies, etc., because they are uh, exceptions. And even then, even those brands don't necessarily uh, elicit the kind of relationships and loyalty and passion that we often assume they do. Customers fundamentally don't care. They don't care about brands. They don't want to learn about brands. They, uh, they're not interested in engaging with, with, with companies. And just because we have access to all of these channels, just because there are all these ways in which we can connect with them, we often tend to assume, erroneously, that customers want to engage with us. What we end up doing is probably stalking us, our customers rather than creating any value for them. So we actually turn them off. So customers are fundamentally apathetic. Customers, uh, the evidence shows uh, they have no relationship typically with brands. 
uh, customers don't go on, on Facebook and talk about us. We often assume that social media is a place where there's a lot of brand related content and people engaging around exciting brands, but customers don't care. It's only about 50% of, uh, of brand knowledge that is held by 20% of customers. So we have a few very enthusiastic customers who know a lot about the brands, but most customers don't know anything and they're not interested. And highly engaging experiences, these things that we often build on, whether on mobile devices or on the internet, etc., designed to engage with customers and to give them ways to connect with us, are often things that bore customers, they're not interested. And when they do engage with us, typically is in a very self-centered way. They do so because they want to get some value out of it that is often typically financial. So in other words, the main reason why people will go online, they will interact with your brand, or they will download an app, etc., is because they think they can get some discount or some immediate reward. And then you add to that the fact that most customer relationship management projects fail, particularly in B2B, this idea that we have to engage using digital channels with customers, etc. A lot of these fail typically because of very poor change management before the CRM implementation, or simply because people think the CRM is software. But the software helps your CRM strategy, but it's not it. So all of these trends, I think, are changing uh, uh, very much uh, how we engage with customers because we still tend to assume that they're very, uh, they're an open, engaged, attentive, interested uh, uh, set of customers, but actually they're not. And so we're offering complex solutions. We, we're thinking of these, these ideas because we have all this complexity. We can tap on into all these digital tools, etc. But we forget that customers actually want the opposite. They crave for simplicity. They want products. They want things that do a, a, one job really, really well and that satisfies their needs. And so we, we have to think about how do we go back to simplicity. How do we use these channels that we have available not to complicate things, not to make your life and the life of your customers more difficult, but actually to simplify things for both the organization and your market. So these are some of the things that we deal with in, in, in this program. We ask questions such as, okay, given the apathy of customers, given the fact that it's very hard to engage them, uh, how do we go about it? How do we bypass? How do we uh, circumvent this apathy, this, the, the fact that customers are so difficult to, 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 to get their attention and to, to hold their interest? So we talk a little bit about how do we use digital to do that. We look at the key forces and trends that are shaping digital, some of the, the ones that I, I discussed earlier. But in particular, we, we're going to ask, you know, what are the opportunities that digital marketing can give your organization? So what are the things that you can look at, almost like a, a, a menu of items, you can look at, oh, that, that would work for me, that would work for me. So it's about really strengthening your competencies in terms of digital, digital marketing, so to make you a better digital marketer, mastering the language of digital marketing, you know, being familiar with all the key tools, but in particular, equip you with the tools needed to be an effective digital marketer. So when you leave this program, uh, we hope that you leave with a lot of fresh ideas, a lot of novel ideas, a lot of uh, uh, practical ideas, and in particular a lot of tools that you can immediately get to work and actually roll out within your business and see the, the, the effects and the outcomes. So we're really trying to expose you to, to, to effective ideas, novel ideas in terms of how to compete in the digital world. That's really the ultimate objective of this program. Who is it for? Well, it's for uh, anyone in uh, mid or upper level management, uh, anyone responsible for developing and implementing digital marketing campaigns, whether you're in B2B or in B2C, this would be relevant to you. But really anyone who has an impact on the digital marketing strategy of their organization, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working within a large or medium organization, uh, this would be relevant to you. Anybody who is interested in upskilling themselves in terms of uh, digital marketing and anyone who has the uh, responsibilities and capabilities and, and latitude within their organization to uh, to, to, to affect change uh, in, in, in the, within the context of digital marketing. Now, what does the typical program look like? What you see here is the, the typical um, outline of the program that is run over two days. Um, so I normally open on, uh, on day one, 
and uh, I introduce the program and I provide an overview of digital marketing, the fundamental concepts, trends and ideas in digital marketing. We look at really marketing from a strategic point of view in this introduction in the morning. And the point here is to highlight certain fundamental issues for sort of fundamental shifts and, 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 and sort of fundamental elements that affect your strategy and your tactics. So we're going to look in this, uh, in this, this first session at the, uh, the state of affairs in terms of research and marketing in the context of digital. And there isn't much research, uh, in uh, academic research in digital marketing because it moves so quickly and because the research process is so slow, so we can't keep up. As, um, uh, as researchers. But we're going to look at this, the state of affairs in terms of research, what, what are uh, scientific uh, papers saying about digital and the tools and the, the opportunities of digital. In the afternoon, we'll be joined by Daniel, uh, who will talk about content marketing and social media. Basically, he will, Daniel will look at the content at the intersection of what the brand really wants to tell its customers and what customers are really interested in. So with, you, with, with Daniel, you'll really look at hands-on uh, evidence of what content should be provided to customers, how it should be provided, and when. Uh, we look at the, the user journey, for example, so how to use content at each step of the way, uh, when to, from the point where your customer becomes interested in what you have to offer to when you perhaps try to make him uh, a loyal customer. Uh, we talk about search engine optimization, web page optimization, so uh, keyword searches, all of this is, is very important tools in uh, digital marketing. We look at measurement tools, so how do you know that what you're doing is, is working? How do you measure the effect of your campaign? And you'll be leaving day one with a digital marketing toolkit. Uh, digital marketing toolkit is a, is a set of tools that are available to you, a lot of which are free uh, to access online to, to work on your digital marketing strategy and we'll also give you a, um, a booklet with all these tools, what they're useful for, internet uh, web, uh, web links um, uh, to, to these tools, how to use them, etc. So what the day is really designed to achieve is to, to, to have a very strategic um, element in the morning when we stimulate your thinking, think about, okay, what does it mean for me? And then in the afternoon, we have a very practical day. So computer open, up on the screen, we're going to look at how do you do this and do it together until uh, it makes sense. So very practical yet very also uh, conceptually solid. On day two, similarly, we start with uh, Katarina, who's a professor also at, at Imperial College Business School. And, and again, we, we're going to ask here, how do we reach the customers effectively using distribution and communications in the world of digital? So it's about really reaching the customer in the most effective way. How do we create value for, for them using uh, online uh, channels? And how do we communicate online again? And using uh, digital channels. Uh, we look at the challenges and opportunities here and this idea of frictionless e-commerce, the fact that the internet is taking away a lot of complexity, a lot of frictions of the old world and how do we maximize that? How do we make sure that you again walk away with the tools that enable you to do that? In the afternoon once again we'll be joined by uh, uh, somebody with a lot of uh, experience uh, as a practitioner but also an academic within um, the business school, Yaka, who will talk about digital growth marketing. So he will really talk about this, this obsession that we often have with the product or the service. You know, when you, when you have a product or a service and you're very proud of it and you, and you know that it works, you, we, we often become obsessed with it, we love it. We're often asking, why aren't people buying it? Or why aren't people seeing what I see in this product? Well, we need to shift our, this obsession a little bit away sometimes from the products and be a little bit more assessed with growth, with the market, with acquiring customers, retaining customers, and engaging valuable customers. So Yaka is going to talk a little bit about the importance of doing that, managing growth, and his experience within um, the, uh, the startup uh, uh, community allows him to draw very interesting parallels. So he's going to look at what do high growth digital companies, you know, the Facebooks of this world, your, your, your PayPal's, all these guys, this is kind of digital natives if you want, what do they all have in common when it comes to really scaling growth, just, just growing so rapidly? And what can we learn 
uh, in terms of lessons that can apply to any business. Uh, so you've got to talk a little bit about scalable, scalable targeted revenue, how to acquire users and customers, engage in them, customer retention, uh, growth hacking, all these really, really interesting tools that, that, that are designed, again, to grow your business and that are particularly important within the world of digital. So this is uh, your typical program outline. Uh, we, 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 we're constantly updating the program to make it always uh, relevant, introducing the latest ideas. So it's constantly evolving. But as you can see, this is a, a program that does a number of very important things. First of all, um, if, you, if you join us uh, within this, this program, you will be in one of the world's best universities. You will be located at Imperial College Business School, a school that it builds on the history of resources, intellectual assets, and networks of Imperial College, uh, and particularly also the, techno the technology uh, um, uh, element of the business of the, of the college that, that, that obviously is infused within the business school. You will be taught both by Imperial College internal faculty and, and, adjunct, and adjunct faculty. So you'll be uh, uh, taught by researchers, people that, that, that work at the forefront of research in digital marketing, that we, we inform some of the latest thinking in terms of digital. But at the same time, also our adjunct faculty, with it, which is very professional, uh, uh, very experienced professional faculty, uh, typically practitioners, very senior roles, all of which are um, lecturers in our programs, so all of which are teaching our MBA, executive MBA programs, and other executive education programs. So you have highly, a highly experienced team of instructors, uh, also with very practical professional industry experience. Uh, that allows us really to deliver something that we're very proud of, which is a rigorous, uh, a, a mix of rigorous research-driven teaching. So the fact that what we say is not just something that one of us has experienced. You know, it's very often the case that you hear people, oh, in my company this works and that. But when you're thinking in terms of rigorous research-driven education, we're based on large samples of organizations, high, large scale studies. So the kind of things that we're sharing with you are based on solid research, not just the experience of one person or an observation or anecdotal evidence. So we try to give you stuff that is solid from a theoretical point of view, from a research point of view. But at the same time, we're also aware of the fact that you want stuff that is managerially relevant. So we're not going to spend uh, time uh, delving into deep theory and concepts and things like that. Everything we do is strikes a balance between this rigor in terms of uh, where the data comes from and the research, etc. while at the same time being practical, being relevant, having managerial implications that are immediately visible to you. We also look at marketing from different perspectives, both strategic and tactical, and that should have been obvious from the uh, summary that I gave you earlier of the typical outline. Uh, as you can see, the days are very much split between strategic, so high-level thinking, uh, really thinking about, for example, business plans uh, and things like that, but also the tactical, so how do I connect with customers, how do I improve my, uh, my website, how do I design uh, a uh, social media um, campaign and things like that. So we, we spend both the strategic and the technical. Our focus is on both the big and small, whether you're a large company, you're a, you're a small startup, whether you, uh, you're a medium-sized business, it's all relevant to you. We use examples from a variety of different perspectives. We also look at the new and the old, the, the, the new ideas, but also some of the old, more established ideas, because we have to remember that although things are changing, some of the things that we've been doing for a few years now are still working. So we look at both very novel ideas, but also well-tested ideas. We use case studies, many examples from best practices, and uh, it's always an interactive learning environment. We do plenty of workshops, so every time we, we spend some time on an idea, we pause, we apply to your business, we look at the implications, we discuss you know, what does it mean for you, and we try to make sure that you walk away knowing exactly what is the meaning of this idea, this concept, this tool, et cetera, for you. And we do that within, this, within the, the workshops. It's a very collaborative, engaging class environment where you learn a lot, not just from us, but also from each other. Well, I hope that this quick introduction to the, uh, to, 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 to the open program was, um, was interesting and it, and it stimulated it uh, and, and encouraged you to uh, perhaps 
ask more questions or join us the next time we run it. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to uh, provide a, uh, uh, a summary of something that we cover in two days that is such exciting and interesting material uh, within the, the little time that we have today. But I hope that at least uh, you've got a little bit of a glimpse of what we're going to do in this program, how we're going to do it. So I thank you very much for your time. I hope to meet uh, a lot of you at the next um, uh, next time we run the program. I will be here to answer questions if you want to ask them now, or uh, you can see my email up on the screen. Feel free to get in touch uh, at any time to ask any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much for your time and have a good day.